Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner by emailing Steve McCarthy at McCarthyS at AmherstMA.gov. That's M C C A R T H Y S at AmherstMA.gov. No in person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship and despite best efforts, we will post on the Amherst website an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. And with that done, we'll um, call the meeting to order at 5.03 p.m. Oh, here comes Doug. Great. And take a roll call. Dylan. Here. Gaston. Here. Doug. Here. And I'm here. So we're four here and one absent. And uh, next thing on the agenda is public comment. Is there anyone here for public comment that's general public comment um, unrelated to anything on the agenda? And if you have that kind of comment, just hit the raise hand button on your computer and Steve will let you in. And I don't see anybody with public comment. So we'll go on to our next agenda item which is licenses, special short-term alcohol serving licenses. And the first one is, um, actually the only one is SST-23-17, Benson Hyde Oxbow Wines LLC, April 22nd at 1 to 5 p.m. at 113 Coles Road on the lawn. Have we done this before, Steve? I No, I believe this or is something... a new application. Oh, it's new, okay. Great, it looked like something else. And there's uh, Benson Hyde, welcome. And would you like to uh, introduce the license or give us a little bit of explanation? Sure. Um, so uh, more or less, this is um, an event to help support uh, the International Language Inst Institute, um, which is based in Northampton. Um, and we uh, are doing um, sort of a wine festival. Uh, we have, uh, the opportunity to have 19 winemakers from Italy who are visiting um, and uh, sort of a connection with the importer um, is actually busing them all out from Boston. Um, and so, um, yeah, so it's more or less the event we're selling, we, you know, the, do you want the plans of how we plan to execute it? Yeah, that would be great. Oh, yeah. If you Sorry. Walk us. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're, we'd be hosting it at um, the space in between where Provisions is and the Coles offices. There's sort of a lawn there. It's where, um, I don't know if any of you guys were involved when Light Up the Night did their event, um, which we were part of that event, but it's in that same exact space, um, which has a, sort of backed up to a fence and then we would fence off um, along the street side of that, which is Coles Road. Okay. Um, and there'd be an entrance um, to get in. We would, we will, um, it's a 21 and over, so people will be um, ID'd and we have uh, bracelets for people as they enter. Um, we're, uh, planning to hire um, a police officer for the day to help be out front and just be around for any contingencies um, and just to give it an a, 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 uh, just a you know a presence there um, and then uh, we will give uh, tickets so basically the the ticket to get in will include tickets that um, to taste at the table of the different winemakers. So you can have a ticket to taste with each winemaker. Um, the plan is there's gonna be, uh, we also have a VIP hour where there are gonna be sort of slightly more expensive wines open um, and it's really limited in the number of tickets so that uh, people can have a, a much more sort of intimate uh, experience with the winemakers. Um, I'm sure I'm missing a bunch of th things here. So <laughs> please feel free to fire some questions at me. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Uh, does anyone have any questions to ask on? 
Yes, hi, thank you. Um, so with these licenses, one of the few but significant restrictions is that um, it's either pay by the drink or if there's anything like an open bar, it's a private guest list. And I, I just want to understand exactly how the um, you also can't have a kind of pay and then all you can drink. And so I just wonder if you could tell us a little bit more about how the, you know, how it, how, how it works after you pay whatever you pay for either the standard or the premium room. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we do have, so that, that generates a list of names. So basically in order to, you know, people basically sign up um, and it generates a list. And so the, in order to get in, people have to be on, <laughs> on that list. Um, and then the uh, the the ticket gets you a certain number of tickets that you you can use to um, taste at the table. Okay. So the you you basically are limited by the number of tickets in the the plan that you purchase. Exactly. How much you can drink after that. Exactly. And okay. The, so I mean, it's the, it's basically just a different way of having a cash bar. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any other questions about this? Yeah, Doug. If I may, I think. Um, excuse me. I mean, first of all, it sounds like a lovely event. I'm not even a. I'm not a drinker, but yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. I, I may not tell my wife because I could be in trouble uh, if I <laughs> if I if I ever go. She'll she'll uh, yeah. enjoy it too much. But. Um, but nonetheless, I think that's the intention is to sort of share these uh, these uh, regions of Italy with with uh, with the community. So, it sounds like a marvelous event. It sounds like that that generally you've got a pretty good handle on on folks. So it's it's kind of a uh, being twenty one and over is is helpful. I think the police officer idea is a good one as well to just in case you know because there is traffic along Coles Road and and the parking lots and whatnot. So to have somebody that's kind of keeping an eye out for that is is helpful as well. Um, and um, I guess the, the the question I have is just you know is um, there just to make sure I'm understanding fully is that the tickets are all sold in advance and then um, no one will be admitted unless they've got a ticket essentially so you can't like bring your ten year old kid because you wanted to bring your ten year old kid they they just won't be allowed to be there along with someone who bought a per or purchased a ticket no that someone can't come. To not participate in the wine drinking, but be inside the inside the the, the rope, as it were. Correct. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Any other questions regarding this application? If not, is there a motion to approve SST dash twenty three? May I just point oh. out? I see. Yep. I see Mr. Talman with a hand up. I don't know if that's oh, a... Mr. Talman. Yeah, I just wanted to. Um make sure something was clear on that. We uh, currently are planning to sell tickets um, at the door. So uh, to the last question, yes, you still would not be allowed in without a ticket, um, but we we were planning to have those at the door. I just want to make sure that that, that, that was clear. If, okay. it's, if it's effectively a cash bar, that's not a problem. Yeah, I don't think it makes a difference. If, right. if, yeah. if it was an open bar, like taste whatever wine you wanted, then it would be an issue. I, I'm curious. So I've been to the light up the night event um, a number of times, which uh, sort of seemed like that a pay to get in and then have a, a tasting. Um, how is how are those permitted? Have, have we approved that recently as a commission? Oh, yeah. Sorry. I guess I, I, I was uh, I, you guys may not be familiar with that. Sorry about that. I, I mean, I think um, I, we, I, when we, I don't think we've had to decide about those, but if we have, I think we would want to know what the uh, limits are, but I, we have uh, Gabrielle with a hand up. Maybe she can help us here. Yeah, Gabrielle. Letting her in. Okay. Good suggestion a couple of meetings ago to uh, promote people to panelists so they can talk so they can use video if they want. So I'm trying that, but it takes a little bit longer to uh, people in. And Gabrielle may have to click something to accept, I'm not sure. But I will allow her to talk the old fashioned way either way. And nope, oh, here she comes back. Oh. Hey, Gabrielle. 
Okay, sorry about that. I don't know what just happened. Hi. Um, Hi. Light up, light up the night. I, I, just because I've attended several times. Um, it's. Is what? Lost you there, Gabrielle. It's killing me. We lost you. I believe is legal under that. Oh, I don't know. Can you hear me now? We missed, we yeah. missed most of that there, yeah, Gabrielle. Yeah, we, we did. We missed it. Okay, sorry. I just wanted to clarify that light up the night just because I've attended is a cash bar for any real drinks. And they do have a very small pacing section as um, other small events do, where it is a uh, half or one ounce pour. And it's a very small taste and tastings fall under a different like sub category. Yes. Um, a, a, a full cocktail is a very different thing or a full glass of wine. That's helpful. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks, Gabrielle. Sorry. Okay, any other questions? If not, is there a motion to approve SST-23-17? Um, so moved. Thank you, is there a second? Second. Thanks, Dylan. Um, any discussion, any further discussion? If not, we'll take a vote, Gaston. Aye. Doug. Aye. Dylan. Aye. And I vote aye. That is four to zero with one absent. Uh, the license is approved. Thank you so much for coming Thank in. Thank you. Thank you guys um, so much. Appreciate yeah, your time. And good luck with your event. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right. Um, okay. Next, we have four temporary outdoor dining applications um, Amherst Coffee, Monkey Bar, Fresh Side, and La Vera Cruzano. And th we did these last year, right, Steve? This is just a repeat. Yes. Yeah, so this is. Um, yeah, there was the uh, ABCC advisory just a little while ago that came right. out that said um, the takeout cocktails and the um, temporary outdoor dining, which meaning in this case, um, you know, approved on a more short term basis of the full alteration of premises would be expended, extended for another year. So okay. since the um, the ones we did last year were only approved for a year, um, these are all back um, exactly as they were. Um, just for um, this next year and um, we did receive uh, applications from um, three of them, but however, Bistro 63 did not get an application in on time. We put it on the agenda because we thought we would, but they didn't get it in yet. So that one um, is not ready. Okay, so we're just approving the three Amherst Coffee. All right, um, is anybody here for these or but these are just- we I believe right Gabrielle through. was gonna speak on- uh, Oh, the okay, Gabrielle, thanks, go ahead. So we are bringing the parklets back, um, <laughs> just uh, waiting for our building permit and then the DP couple and type they will, re will rebuild them. Um, they will go in the exact same locations that they were in last year. The bid will hold the town as additional insured and um, all four of the businesses, if approved, will have um, an additional insure insured on the parklets as they did last year as well. Um, I think that they are very well received, respected and enjoyed. And I think that they do make downtown a lot prettier and a lot more vibrant. Okay, great, thank you. Um, any questions for Gabrielle about these? If not, is there a motion to approve the three temporary outdoor dining applications, Amherst Coffee, Fresh Side, and La Vera Cruzano? So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Oh, sorry, second. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Reading the agenda over here, not paying attention to the agenda in progress. <laughs> All right, thanks, Dylan. Um, any further discussion or questions? If not, we'll take a vote. Doug. Aye. Dylan. Aye. Gaston. Aye. And I vote aye. That is four to zero with one absent. Uh, those have been renewed or they've been approved. Thank you, Gabrielle. Thank you, everyone. Have a yeah. great week. You too. Bye. Okay, next up are the, oh, this is interesting. Amendments to lunch cart food truck applications, um, LCFT-1 Roosters Roaming Cantina change of hours. So Steve, do you wanna introduce this one or do we have people here? Yeah, oh, Amanda I will introduce it. We do have Amanda O'Connor here. So um, with this is new, kind of interesting. Yeah, with the new food truck regulations, there was the provision for food trucks to um, apply. You know, the, By default, they get eight to eight, but they could mm -hmm. apply for later hours. Um, Roosters Roaming Cantina is a new food truck that are uh, new to Amherst anyway that um, came in this year and they've been um, experimenting around Kendrick Park and um, they have found that uh, the hours don't quite match up with the demand and um, they'd like to explore some more late night service. I will let them uh, give more details on that, but I did um, 
from the application by the police chief and fire department and none of them had any concerns with it. Okay, great, thank you. Ms. O'Connor, welcome. Hi, thank you for um, having me. Um, so uh, we, we've made it to um, Amherst a couple times. Um, obviously, you know, with the weather being the weather, you know, it's very hard with food truck during the winter months. It is something that we, uh, we do do. Um, we have had a very, um, very good welcoming from the people of Amherst. Um, we have basically been parking over at Kendrick Park and we are getting a lot of notice and um, a lot of repeat customers are ready. Uh, what we are getting a lot of though are a lot of the younger uh, college age kids who are um, heading out um, later in the evening um, to go do their things, whatever it be, going to the bars, hanging out, um, meeting up with friends and all that type of stuff. And they're stopping in and they're asking um, how long we're going to be there till. And, um, you know, obviously the answer is uh, eight o'clock, you know, and they're like, oh, we wish you were here later. We wish you were here later. Um, so we're looking to see if there's a possibility that we could get in um, and stay uh, in during the later hours to be able to accommodate uh, people that are requesting uh, a lot of that. One of the things that I had mentioned to Steve is that we do have um, two of those uh, inverter generators. Uh, they are the very quietest that you can buy. So they are, I don't wanna say noiseless, but they they really aren't um, disruptive to, to anybody at all, uh, even if you're standing within five feet of them. So um, that, I know that that would be one of the big issues that people would have is if we have a, a generator that's cranking, you know, late into the night and that type of stuff. So we do have the ability to be um, pretty, pretty, pretty quiet over there. So um, yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, that's all sounds promising. So you want to go, uh, you're, want to, you're applying to be open till one, is that right? Or are we just talking about this right now? Well, we, we would like to do it. So uh, basically in my letter, like I had said, um, you know, the food truck season is coming up and we do, right. we do travel around and we do go to uh, distilleries and wineries and, and breweries. So we wouldn't be in Amherst every single day. We wouldn't be in Amherst oh, every okay. single day. Um, we are basically trying to get there at least twice a week and, and set up like, so that people know our designated times and dates that we're going to be there. One okay. of the things that we're interested in doing is possibly being there earlier in the day um, um, from like 11 to six and then, you know, kind of like closing up and, you know, going down, like I said, uh, Omar has a house in Amherst so we could go park it, you know, in the driveway for a couple hours and then come back, you know, and, and serve again a little bit later in the evening, you know, as it's warranted or if we find all the businesses later on at night because this is so new and we haven't been there we we really are just trying to to get everybody happy you know us uh the town the people um everybody so we're we're still just just trying things out but yeah one o'clock um the only thing i do want to say about that is if we do close at one o'clock we'll probably be there for about 20 to 25 minutes after the one 1 a.m um just cleaning up uh, it takes about 20 minutes to shut down and, and all that Okay, great. Um, thanks. Does anyone have any questions for Ms. O'Connor? Uh, yes, yeah, Dylan. Uh, I mean, first, I'll, I'll say you, you had me a change of hours. I, uh, I've been pulling <laughs> in. I, I live right off of Kendrick, and I've been looking for the truck, but when I come in late, I don't see you. Um, yeah, and that's the other the, thing, too. It's been hard to, it's, it's hard to, uh, promote uh you know i've been on uh, the amherst uh town of amherst facebook page so we're trying to get uh we, ha we have a couple young kids that uh, a family that live in amherst so we're going to send them around with some flyers and that type of stuff so hopefully we can start getting in there right more regularly the um the other thing i would consider though is uh you know if bars are, are really getting out at 1 a.m <laughs> and if you're closing up shop at 1 a.m i mean does would you folks want to be open later than 1 a.m with this board do we have any objection or do we support that um in in kendrick park what are first uh, your thoughts as the uh as the truck and then what are our thoughts as the board if one of the things that we love is if we have a line we want to serve them so i mean if people were getting out at one o'clock and they did want us to stay there if we could be there till two o'clock i that that's the thing is like we just don't really know I, I don't you know without having had that opportunity yet to do that i mean i i would prefer if we could stay i i just didn't know what to write on on the application you know or the letter because we we haven't had the opportunity to do all that if we could do a two o'clock and then you know if we're done by 1 30 we could close up at one 
one thirty. you know, I mean, we don't have to be there either, you know, so if that would work better for everybody, then yeah, it's definitely something that we could do. Yeah, Steve, didn't you say that Rob Mora had a, some insight into this and that he said there was one restaurant that and isn't Antonio's open? Till yeah. Two? So, um, so originally when we were discussing, I was discussing this with uh, Amanda over email, um, they were thinking about applying for two o'clock and um, I did bring this up to Rob Mora. He, um, his only note, and this wasn't really, you know, him saying, no, it's not possible or, or advising you not to approve it. But his only thing he thought would be good to share with the board was that, um, you know, under the new zoning bylaw uh, section for restaurants, um, they are required to close at 1 a.m. Um, and so every restaurant that's been around before that is not subject to those regulations. I believe Antonio's is regularly open past that. Um, but um, he just wanted to pass that along for the board to consider. That doesn't mean he thinks that it shouldn't be approved. Maybe that means there's more demand for food trucks after one. He just thought it'd be something to, to consider. Okay, thanks. Gaston? Yeah, thank you. That's very helpful information. I mean, my reaction to, um, to that comment about restaurants having to close is that um, that's why there's a necessity. And this um, commission's kind of one of our policy commitments is to uh, try to keep food available where there's drinking. And, and so um, I think that observation about the time that other restaurants close is uh, only more reason for the truck uh, to be able to be open. That's one point. Number two, if the issue is that restaurants want to be open later, then and, and this inspires them to make the case for it, then, then I think they should make the case for it. Um, I, I think, and I appreciate very much, um, Ms. O'Connor, that you're, you know, want to cooperate here with us and find the right way to do it. And so, I mean, my only um, thought is that uh, this is a new experiment. And so we just need to, from my point of view, need to be open to hearing uh, neighbors tell us that they've got some issue like this and that we can you know, invite you back to think it through. Yeah, for sure. That sounds great. Like I said, we, we really want to, we really want to make it work there too. You know, we really want to be, you know, open and available, you know, to the, to this committee and everybody, you know, like we, we want to hear the good. We want to hear the bad. We want to know what people want. So um, that, that's, that's why we started this food truck so that we could, you know, give everybody what we, what we love and you know share with everybody and it just seems like the demand right now just seems to be a little bit more late at night and like i said when the summer comes and the weather's a little bit better and the kids are playing at the park like you know uh, it may be different they may want, want us during the day too and we're you know we're available to do both of those so okay uh doug yeah i think the thing i think about is <clears throat> yeah the summer hours you know summer and and school year are very, very different animals in Amherst and, and, uh, you know, and, and, uh, you can talk to, you know, the bar owners in town or the restaurant owners in town and, and, uh, the struggles they have, you know, in, in those brick and mortar businesses for those summer months, because it's so quiet in town, but, but nonetheless, uh, many of them do, do well as there. They just do better when the schools in town, there's a lot more people in town. So that's, well, of that's course. Cool. So uh, the thing I think about, I mean, I appreciate that you mentioned the noise and the, and the fact that you've got the really quiet uh, generators. That's really helpful because then we'll be keeping Dylan, Dylan up past his bedtime. But um, uh, but I think the other thing I think about, and, and some of this is not entirely your burden to bear, but I think it's a good neighbor thing to do is that, you know, a lot of these folks are going to be on foot and they're going to be walking to campus, uh, from campus and to campus. And the two things that I think about is how they choose to go through the neighborhoods, you know, in, in and around the campus. And and the trash that they may be carrying with them or not carrying with them. So it, I would suggest that any and all reminders to, to be respectful of, of, you know, which which houses they're walking by and how respectful they are in those, you know, from a noise and, a, and, and civility standpoint, but also I think if they're, you know, taking stuff and kind of going to go, it's like, be mindful of your trash and, and uh, either throw it away here because we've got, you know, receptacles for you to do that, but also it's like, hey, if you don't, make sure to put it, you know, don't, just don't toss it to a yard, you know, we don't want it that around town and it's a it's a good neighbor thing you know that you can do i think to to to, to help that's just more advice and, and and recommendations for you guys that i think will build goodwill with with the folks that live in and around where you guys are are, are working 
Sure. And one of the things that we can do right now is we do do like to go and we do have styrofoam containers. Unfortunately, um, it is the way that we do. But when we go to uh, food truck festivals and stuff like that, we do them all in the boats. So it would be something that we could totally consider is, you know, if the the, the college kids after hours, you know, um, are looking to eat it, that we could just do it in the boat. At least it's a paper boat and it's a lot more um, eco friendly instead of the styrofoam. We could make sure that we we just serve them that way. Um, you know, instead of the typical, like when somebody calls in a to-go and in a bag to go that way. So we totally, and we can put up signs in the, the trash, you know, reminding them to, you know, be ever vigilant on, you know, keeping, keeping our, our, our parks clean. So for sure we could do that. Thanks. Thanks. Gaston? And, and can you, during the day you've been parking on the neighborhood side of Kendrick, is that right? I'm, I'm not familiar with the direction side, but if you're coming up from the lights by Amherst College on the left side of the it. Left. And so, yeah, I mean, uh, I appreciated, Doug, your point. And I mean, now I'm just brainstorming, so I, I don't really know what I'm talking about, but I, I wonder if there's any way that for those like late nights, the 8 p.m. to 1 in the morning or whatever it is, it, would it be an option for the truck to be on the other side? of the park precisely for uh, Doug's point that then students would walk home through the rotary, well, perhaps rather than in the neighborhood. I don't know. I'm, I don't know if this is uh, at all worth considering or an option. Uh, Dylan? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I actually think it's a, it's a great point. It might even make sense to, um, I think from, from everyone's perspective, uh, to maybe even be on that side or even be just in a parking spot, maybe uh, kind of outside of spoke a little bit, because I think one, you're going to get uh, people now don't have to cross that road at night. Um, it's going to be way closer to where I think you're going to get most of your foot traffic there. Uh, people are much more likely to congregate there rather than grab their things and, and leave. So it might be able to help deal with trash safety uh, and improve business as well. Cause you know, ah, do I walk across Kendrick or do I walk up the street to well, Antonio's? Yeah. Or do I go to the food cart? That's right there. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, a couple drinks in, right? It is right there. So I think it could benefit everybody to have it, uh, have the food truck move away from Kendrick Park for the, the later hours. Oh, and, so you're, you mean like, fl yeah, flush up against the sidewalk, like in the middle of those parking spaces. So have we authorized that or we can do that, right? We can just. So in, in the regulations, um, you know, we just took them, the locations as was in the select board. Right. Um, and the west side of Kendrick Park was noted as a location. Right. Um, nothing over where we're discussing is. I mean, that's right. something somebody could request as a special location. And okay. um, I might suggest the Prey Street parking lot because at least it's, um, you know, kind of oh. more closed than actually on North Pleasant Street. That's a um, great idea. But that would be something yeah. for the board to consider in the future. The Prey Street parking lot. Okay. okay. Um, I, I guess I wonder if what we can do this evening is uh, request that um, that Ms. O'Connor follow this up with, with Steve and, and Rob Mora. Um, but I think that uh, Dylan's point is, is extremely, I mean, valuable. It's almost dangerous. It, the better your food is and the more uh, people hanging out at the Spoke or other establishments in town are, the more dangerous it is to cross there where there's no crosswalk. Um, and, and so I think it would be really a uh, good idea. and extremely good for your business, given that the spoke encourages people to bring food in from outside. Yeah, we had we had spoken to both the spoke and Garcia's to see if they would let us um, come in and, and park in their parking lots, but um, yeah, that did not go over quite as, uh, as we had hoped. So <laughs> um, I don't wanna say that they were negative about it or anything, but they just kind of were like, oh, we'll get back to you. And then th that was just, that was just it. So, okay. um, yeah, I, I would note the zoning is challenging mm -hmm. for um, businesses trying to do those things in their parking lot because usually that has to be approved. It's not in the special permit, so it is a challenge to uh, permit something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So, uh, number one, we need to figure out a good parking space for the hours that you are interested in. And uh, Steve, can she, uh, Ms. O'Connor, work with you and Rob? Follow up so on just that. to clarify uh, yeah. your request, so if they wanted to request a special space, um, special. I think we had a special um, provision for that where they would put out the sign and everything. Yes. Um, and they haven't made that request for today anyway, so that would be okay. something I think that would have to be um, 
approved by the board after that notice. And I think the hearing was supposed to be posted in the sign. Yes. Um, you know, the board could certainly put it on, you know, we have our uh, upcoming agendas item. We could certainly put on, you know, exploring the, uh, the locations again, um, okay. the pre-approved locations because they wouldn't have to go through that trouble. Okay. Um, and um, I do believe the late hours can be uh, restricted to specific locations, but um, right now, you know, roosters is just um, disallowed in the, um, the normal, you know, the default locations. Right. And okay. um, the board could, um, you know, could choose to allow them to be open late in uh, all possible locations, which would be the west side of Kendrick Park there, um, across from La Vera Cruzana and up at Sweetser Park, um, or just um, just in that particular location. But we probably would need a, a further, either an alteration of the regulations or for them to make the special location request to um, be anywhere else. Okay. So, um, yeah, Dylan? I was going to say, well, um, while we kind of uh, do the uh, I don't know bureaucratic wrangling on how to how to get the food truck where I think we we might all like it, uh, how would we feel about approving a change of hours for a temporary amount of time until we can get that settled? Because I mean, maybe they they open up uh, two a.m. right where they are currently, and and everything works out great, and this is all kind of a moot point. Or you know, we see lots of litter and and, and issues, and we realize the need for it. I think it I think it would work, and then you know, not waste. Uh, not waste valuable time because we only got so many weeks here before the uh, the end of the semester. I don't what have an initial else? problem with it. I just was wondering if it, let me. I, it would be great to have it open that late I, if we needed neighborhood feedback before we did that. Yeah. I mean, is that something we were talking about earlier, Gaston? Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I, I I was gonna try to construct a motion that does what uh, Dylan was suggesting and something okay. like um, if we approve this request for six weeks in, in the current location or in any location, I guess, then um, we give ourselves maybe four weeks to schedule another meeting to get ahead of that, having uh, decided which route we wanna take on um, adding a location if it seems important to do so. So we could just schedule a check-in basically in two or four weeks. Um, what does everybody think of that? I would lean more towards two. Dylan, Doug? Give him a thumbs up. I, uh, I like that idea. Um, I would say check-in's fine. I think that the, the critical question is that, will that give, um, you know, uh, Amanda, uh, you know, enough time to sort of, you know, cause they're only coming a couple of days a week. It's like, do we get enough <laughs> data to understand what's going on, right? And does she have a sense of what the market's like in that? I, we may need a little more time for her to sort of see how this plays out. Because, you know, the first week or so, you know, people discover she's open later after the right. fact. I think there'll be a little bit of time for discovery. Um, so it, it may take us, you know, you know, four weeks to have a sense of, of is this, you know, gaining ground in a way that is constructive or destructive? Either right. way, I think it's going to take us a little while. So we want to give them an opportunity to have some success. That would be my my feedback there is that I think a check-in is a good idea. I think it's we don't want to hamstring them to have success and, okay. and you know. Right. So I think I think UMass commencement is what May fourteenth this year. Is that right? It's a little bit later. I think it may be even later than that. I think it's is it later? Memorial Day. I could be wrong. Oh, is it? Is it that late this year? Does it, I haven't looked it up. I should know this. I'm, I'm trying to, uh, right I, I don't see our food uh, truck regulations on the home page, our home page. Um, I will email them all to you, or I can even pull them up on the screen if you'd if like. You could maybe pull them up on the screen. I just want to see what the, the what the time frames were for the posting and neighborhood response. <laughs> Commencement weekend is uh, May 26th to May 28th, but yes. I'll oh, wow. Right okay. Now. I was going to say, I just looked that up, 26th. So here is the uh, section in question. Okay, so. Um, oh, 10 days before the meeting. Yeah, that so we, we could them. basically, I, Doug's point is important about having experience. Um, so we can maybe give three weeks of experience to 
um, or maybe it come back in four weeks, figure out what lo if the location should change, what it should be. Planning for that um, then six weeks from now, which is still before um, the UMass commencement to approve <coughs> the location. Um, so that from the four week check-in, deciding about a new location, the sign can go up the next day and then we're, we're ready to go um, two weeks from then. So that's May, at the May 4th meeting is the check-in. I, I, I'm trying that's to- four weeks from now. Because it, it would be good to be um, in the location that's gonna work for you by the commencement so the students get to know it and especially because of the crowds. Right. Okay, does that sound good to everybody? For me. Dylan, Doug? I like it. Yeah. I'm nodding okay. my head, but we're not in the okay. uh, Brady Bunch mode. So Gaston, can you put together some kind of motion that encompasses all of that? Okay. Um, um, motion to approve the new hours to go uh, to 2 a.m. for uh, six weeks from now. Planning to have a check-in meeting in four weeks to assess what seems to be the best location for the late night. Sounds great. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Doug. <laughs> Any further discussion? If not, we'll take a vote. Dylan. Aye. Gaston. Aye. Doug. Aye. And I vote aye. That is four to zero with one absent. Uh, the change of hours and all the other stuff has been approved. Okay, great. Thank you so, guys. Great. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks so much for coming in. See and you in we'll, a month. Yeah, look forward to seeing you. Great. And I will yeah. uh, see you all hopefully and uh, see you on May 4th. Right? On May 4th. Yep. Wonderful. So yeah, Thank the you. new hours expire on the 18th of May, and the okay. check can be on the 4th. May right. 18th. All right. Wonderful. Thank you guys so much. You have a great rest of your evening. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. Okay. So we are, okay. Well, that'll be interesting to see how it goes. Um. We can we can try to guarantee the success by going there. <laughs> yes, we all have to go there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm almost walking distance from work. Well, actually, I am walking distance from work. It's a little bit of a hike, but not has too bad. Any, has anybody been there yet? I have. I had been. it once. It was pretty good. Oh, was it? Okay. What'd you have? Um, I think it, I got a variety of the different tacos they had. It was definitely oh, okay. definitely a good lunch. Oh, good. I passed it twice after eating dinner and seeing it, and it's like, well, maybe next. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so new next thing is D, new liquor license applications, and well, we're let's we can do D and E because these are just going to be continued until the next meeting. Is that right, Steve? Yeah. So unfortunately, uh, Mr. O'Rourke had a conflict tonight. He did not uh, aware of. He's coached as a. Uh, a high school sports game and they had a uh, important high school sports sports team and they had an important game today so he um wasn't able to make it today so they requested a continuance until april 20th okay so we're gonna do both of these um all right is there a motion to continue the um new liver license application for the spoke llc doing business as spoke live on prey street from uh today april 6th to april 20th I believe we would need a time certain for that too. So five at five o'clock. Is that what you mean? Yes. Okay. At five o'clock. So move. That moved. Okay. okay. Thank you, Dylan. And thank you, Doug. <laughs> uh, we'll take a vote. Dylan. Aye. Gaston. Aye. Uh, Doug. Aye. And I vote aye. That is four to zero with one absent. Um, but it is here. The hearing is continued until April 20th. And the next one is the change of liquor license manager application. And is there a motion to continue the hearing for the change of liquor license manager application for the Spoke LLC doing business as the Spoke 35 East Pleasant Street 
from April 6th until April 20th, same time, Steve, or five minutes later? Um, we could do 15. that. At the same time, we'll, we'll support the uh, legal requirements, I think. At, at five o'clock. So moved. Thank you, Dylan. It's a, thank you, Doug. Take a vote. Dylan? Aye. Gaston? Aye. Doug? Aye. And I vote aye, four to zero with one absent. Uh, that hearing is continued until April 20th. I thought and since then, I was at the last meeting, I thought it best if I didn't make the motion. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, you know, right. Much more no, as long, just got to make it for easy, easy for Steve when he finally does those minutes. Right. Copy and paste comes in very much handy. <laughs> um, okay. So the next one is farmer winery application to sell at farmer's market, Stony Brook cider. And this the is the applicant here. I will uh, allow him to talk. Oh my gosh. Didn't realize he'd been in the room that long. Okay. Uh, oh, not hello. anymore. Hi, Mr. Lamontagne. Oh. Thank you so much for coming. Um, and would you like to introduce your application? Uh, Mike, we just need you to uh, unmute there. There we go. There we go. Hi, uh, welcome. Thank you. Hi. Uh, Hi. Yes, I've been selling my hard cider at the Amherst Farmers Market for six years now, and I'd like to continue. I'm also a member of the Am Amherst Farmers Market Committee, and um, I know all of the uh, all of the ways to check IDs and <laughs> and spot phony ones. And I'd, I'm I'm just here to uh, see if I can get another year out of it. Great, great, thank you. Um, any questions, Gaston? I thank you. I, I just want to double check the um, time that you're looking for: seven thirty a.m. to one thirty p.m. Is that right? That's correct. Okay, all right, very good. That aligns with the the farmer market hours, right? They are. Yeah. Okay. Do many people want cider at seven a.m.? No. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> Jumpstart your day a little bit there. I know, right? <laughs> well, most of the people that come in at seven seven thirty, and we usually have a line, but they're all over fifty, and most of them are on medications. <laughs> don't, don't allow them to drink cider, so okay. <laughs> that's okay. I bring a Kindle, okay. <laughs> and then I read till about ten o'clock, and then I sell my cider. Okay. <laughs> yep. All right, sounds great. Um, is there a motion to approve the license for Stony Brook Cider? So moved. Thank you. The second. Thank you, Dylan. Thank you. Um, any further discussion? No. We'll take a vote. Um, Dylan. Aye. Gaston. Aye. Doug. Aye. And I vote aye. That is four to zero with one absent. The license is approved. Thank you so much for coming in. And great I hope Thank you have you. something great to read on your Kindle. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, where are we? BLC. Oh, okay. Renewal of common victuallers licenses. So, um, and these are just left over, right, Steve? Yeah, so, we've been going a bit more carefully this year and cross-checking the food license applications with um, common vics, and we found a few that uh, never quite made it over to uh, OpenGov, so. Okay, great. Um, so, we have two Dunkin' Donuts and House of Teriyaki. Um, is there a motion? I don't think, does anyone have any questions about these? No, if not, is there a motion to approve uh, the common VIX for Dunkin' Donuts and House of Teriyaki? So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thanks, Dylan. Um, we'll take a vote. Dylan. Aye. Gaston. Aye. Doug. Aye. And I vote aye. That is four to zero with one absent. Uh, those are approved. Um, okay, so discussion topics. And I don't know how much we want to get into this one. Dylan, you have to go at six. Is that right? No. Oh, you no, don't. I, 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 I no, actually, no, we don't now. You have to go at six. Okay. Yes. So we will, and I know you worked on this a bit, Gaston. So the residential rental, rental property bylaw, Mandy Johanneke couldn't be here tonight, but she did send along the most current regulations uh -huh. and the draft, most recent draft of the bylaw. And she asked for our input specifically with the hearing, the appeals process, which I think she took from ZBA because we don't have a formal one as far as I know. And then the um, the fines, 
which I think they have, and I think the uh, the appeals process is listed under the regulation that she sent, and then the fine is under the bylaw, and I think it's three hundred three hundred dollars. I was looking at it the other day. So, um, well, I, I, I uh, Steve, I wonder if you might just share in the. Um, let me see what the title of the document is. The regulations work, CRC working, mm -hmm. um, the one that starts with that, because that that shows the new section at the end in um, blue line. So we it pops out and we can actually, the other one has the text as well, but we can look at it together. The, the regulations for general bylaw? Yeah, yeah. At the very end of that document um, is the section on appeals and I mean, I think we could read it together. And um, where's the fine? Is that a PDF? It's under, no, it's under, you should have gotten the the bylaw. I think it's in there. Let me say. Okay. General residential bylaw. It's 300, you're correct, by the way. Yeah, 300. Okay. Um. I mean, my recollection from when um, Mandy visited us is that it was really hard to identify a likely case that would actually come to us. Right. And that our being available for appeals is almost um, a deterrent. I mean, I, I think that that's that that would be my my comment would be to um, you know we've kind of put her on the spot with that question, but would be to ask her if she could you know identify two or three of the kinds of possible appeals she thinks we would get. Right. So I'm sorry, you're saying we're not, we don't think we're going to get appeals because um, we just don't think there's going to be a lot of enforcement or just when it is enforced, nobody's going to, to appeal to us? Um, so the property owner is denied a residential rental permit. They appeal to us like on what grounds would we be able to find that there was an erroneous denial? And if it's a, based on a technical reason, Steve, can you try to see if you can help me out reconstructing the, the, the mem my memory of this, that if it's a, based on Rob Morrow's team's assessment that there's an issue, we're not really in a position to review the judgment that pertains to the denial or revocation well yeah i mean it's um i i suppose you could review the judgment um i can't really think of many examples where a denial would i mean even occur occur or be appealed i mean the only maybe there'd be a you know the only example I can think of is maybe there's something that's disputed if there was, you know, oh, this is a two family back in 1950 and it's still, it still should be, or, you know, but we don't think it is maybe, um, I can't imagine too many circumstances like that. I can imagine maybe suspensions or revocations being appealed if they say the violations were, um, you know, not, uh, not true violations or something. Um, but I guess it really, um, I mean, if it's an appeal, um, and maybe that is something that needs uh, a little bit more clarification if it's a complete de novo second hearing of the facts or if it's more of a procedural um, review. 
Yeah, I uh, that exact. I mean, I'm still very, I'm still hazy on it. Um, I'm still not clear what kind of appeal comes to us that we're in a good position to uh, rule against the town, which is what we'd be asked to do. Yeah, I think. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Doug. Well, I was just going to say the, the, the only thing I can think about is is if there was, and again, I, I think this gets back to, to what Steve was saying, is that unless for a denial, um, you know, unless the denial is a is a you know they have to apply each year, so it would be a renewal, really a denial of renewal, um, but more revocation or suspension, and that would be based on on uh, you know sort of evidence. Are we are we going to rehear the evidence um, because you know, there was dispute about it and it felt as though the, you know, the, because if memory serves, again, remind me if I'm incorrect, a lot of those will be based on, you know, code inspection by building commissioner, fire, you know, et cetera. And so, you know, it's, I think it's very rare that we would think that would be some sort of uh, judgment that they made incorrectly. Um, I think the other thing, thing is if it's a suspension until repaired that could be um you know and 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 whether or not there's um or if it's a suspension that extends beyond the length of time for repair or if if that's a you know even a, a possibility so like if they said oh you you didn't meet fire code we're going to suspend you for six months um but it only takes a month to get it fixed you know do you have to you know they could appeal for reinstatement because there's five months where they're losing revenue. That's that I'm literally making this up as I go. Um, that's the only case I can kind of think of off the top of my head. That would be legitimate for us to review. It's like, is this punitive in a way that's unintentional or inappropriate? Right. But I don't know if there's any of those cases that will ever happen. It may be a thing where it's the revocation or the denial or, or suspension are, are going to be, you know, on sh you know, for the entirety of the rest of that license year, yeah. right? In other words, if you get, you know, if you get revoked, is it until the next cycle of, of renewal? So that's a, and I don't, I just, I haven't had a chance to review to see if there's nuance there. All right. Guess yeah, on? I mean, I, go ahead. Oh, John. I was going to say, well, say I, I believe, um, excuse me, but I, I, I'll just get this out quickly. I believe most of the times you'd see a suspension or something like that is due to repeated code violations and, um, you know, uh, you know, over occupancy or misconduct like that that's been repeated and not been corrected um, i'm not entirely familiar with the newest draft of this but um that's what i would guess anyway guest on i was going to ask you steve a question i um i mean we residential rental permits are now kind of a voluntary application but have you is there anything like a denial of one that you have um experienced yeah i was trying to rack my brain for this and and i'm um just kind of speaking completely extemporaneously, I haven't spoken with anybody else uh, in inspection services about this, but I mean, I can imagine maybe a case where, you know, sometimes we'll see things where, um, you know, for some reason or another, some inspector will go to a house and it's listed as a single family in our records, but there's a second unit built in. And sometimes that's just people who build them, um, you know, kind of under the cover of darkness. And um, there's also sometimes where, um, you know, there's one case we've uh, been, uh, communicating with where there's a house that's a you know very old house and it's supposed to be a um, three family according to our records but they have four apartments and they listed it as a four um, a four you know three rental units they would be living there um, and um, you know going back through the history um, you know it's even speaking to some people who knew them we think it was probably the case where there was three apartments and then both mother-in-laws of the couple who lived there moved in and um, after they passed and they kind of split up the third one, the third apartment, um, you know, even when they were all living there as a family. And then once those um, people passed and then different relatives moved in, they thought it was um, different apartments. And we didn't really deny that one out of hand, but we have we've kind of held it, and pushed, you know, and not issued it. Um, and so maybe that's a circumstance where somebody I, don't, I guess maybe that's a constructive denial. Maybe somebody would. Um, consider that such I, I mean just to use that example suppose that you denied that um and then they appeal are we really is are we really in a position to effectively 
um, approve an extra apartment by by our by our decision to overturn uh, your action. It just seems like uh, uh, you know a little bit uh, a little bit unclear how this is supposed to work to me. Right, Doug. Yeah, I would, I, yeah. I think the question of denial is a really unlikely scenario, but but um, I think the other thing, Steve, uh, you know, you sort of mentioned that case, and I'm thinking to myself, well, um, town assessors really going to want to know if they've added a fourth apartment because it changes how you value the property and assess the property uh, for purposes of property tax and and especially on apartments because it, you know, they use. Um, some metrics around you know rental and that sort of stuff is, is part of how they set property tax on on properties. So, you know, I think that's that maybe is a is a is a piece of of how does the um, you know tax property tax assessment and appeal process work might be helpful and instructive for us in looking at this because there is you know if if when we when when your property is reassessed you have uh, the ability to challenge that. And appeal that, and and they have a way in which they go through that. And and again, that's a circumstance where you know a trained professional, a tax assessor, is making a judgment about the value of your home and and how they do that. Now, granted, it's it, there's some some art as well as science to that kind of process, but I think it could be a constructive uh, paradigm to look at around some of these questions on how we would work as an appeal board. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I did. I have been talking with the assessor um, a little bit in the last couple of months about these issues. We were kind of comparing notes of, uh, you know, these houses that are that might be assessed differently than than what we think they are ever permitted for. And I can imagine in terms of not just the mis, you know, outside of the misconduct type of suspensions or revocations, which I would think would be the vast majority. Oh, shoot. Probably the vast majority of things that would be appealed yes. uh, would probably be weird cases like this with very old. Um, you know, old houses with, you know, that would possibly predate zoning for these types of things that, you know, there's dispute as to, um, well, was this ever a three family? Was this ever a four family? We don't really know. Um, and I would suspect that if, uh, you know, somebody applied for a rental permit and got and got the appeal and the license commission said, well, we, uh, you know, we'll, 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 you know, overturn this denial, I suspect the assessor would uh, go ahead and tax it as such because, um, you know, much like you have to, you know, even if it's not really one at the end of the day, you know, much like uh, you have to declare your illegal income on your income taxes, I'm sure they'll yeah. still want their cut if it's being used as a apartments. Right. Um, I, I just need to cut in to hop off uh, since it's okay. six o'clock. My All request right. would be for Mandy to come up with two or three plausible appeals and then get Rob Mora's feedback. And then I'd like to hear that. That I think would really be helpful. Okay. To uh, think about it. So, All thank right. you, everybody. Thanks, I, Gaston. See I'll you next time. Take care. Bye bye. All right. So, do we want to? Um, okay. So, I have Gaston's question two or three kinds of possible appeals. It would be nice, it would be great to have Mandy here um, to talk. And then we have, um, I guess, uh, tied in with that is the two different kinds of the property tax and the appeals process probably appeals related to misconduct. Are there any other questions that we want to bring to her or when she comes that we'd like to have anything else? Well, I think on the, on the, on the property tax, you know, appeals uh -huh. process, I mean, I think talking to the assessor will be, you know, how, to, how that works. Um, okay. There's a formal like state level, like when you, you know, uh, the, the sort of recent high profile version of that mm -hmm. is, uh, is in Leverett, the Kittredge property, uh, Oh. They challenged the the valuation and they won, um, but it, you know. So I think the actual appeal process is is maybe handled by a state level office. I'm not suggesting it, but I'm just saying it's like <clears throat> getting some sense of how they evaluate uh, those kinds of challenges uh, on that sort of next level that gets outside of in 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 the property tax circumstance. It's going to be outside the town's, you know. Uh, purview at that point when they get that that to kind of challenge there's either a Hampshire County person or a, a statewide person that does that for review but but okay. the criteria they use and how they go about it might be helpful for us to learn about okay all right criteria okay um all right so anything else on this topic yeah Dylan sorry uh I just want to quickly ask Steve you were at 
you were at the ZBA meeting last week, right? Uh, last week, I don't know if I was. If you remind me uh, what the topics were, uh, was the um, the we were reviewing that special permit that was going in right across the street from Gaston. Um, oh no, I was not there for that one. I sent out some things about it, but I wasn't there. Got it. Yeah. So I know. Or, you know, yeah, Gaston Actually, does raise a lot of. What's that? I know. Now that you mentioned, that I was. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, because Gaston has raised. Uh, I think some good points because I, I I know. So what, what we had come to us uh, last time on the CBA was a case where it was a special permit that had already been approved, but it was worded in such a way that if any modifications to the permit uh, should be done, it just has to come back to the board for review. And it put us in a, a weird situation where there are pretty substantial changes to the plan where it almost looked like a, a new plan. But, uh, you know, according to, to Rob Mora, we were in a, a position where we couldn't really deny the permit because it was still within the the definition of the special permit but we were still in a position where we had to we still had to go through the approval but approval was effectively our only option so i think it is a concern that we might end up with a, an appeals process where it's like yep you've appealed it and procedurally the only thing we're allowed to do is deny your appeal so yeah i think it's yeah. i think it's a it's a good point that we got to think of to make sure that we're not just building a, a a big no machine so yeah bureaucracy for no real value yeah yeah but that was kind of like they i think part of her point was when she was here last time is that they needed somewhere to have like an, to do the appeal and we're the ones who right. have done it in the past so we're going to be doing this one and and i don't i don't disagree that there needs to be an appeal process i think we right. can, i think what we're really seeking is are there circumstances like should denial be included in that um right you know and, and if it is then what are the cases where we could actually materially you know uh reverse a denial or you know or i mean we we need to have the, the ability and the criteria to, to kind of go either way to say right. yes. otherwise it, you know, as Dylan says, we're just a big either no machine or yes machine. One of the one, you know, like right. in, in that ZBA example, it's like, oh, they have to review it, not review it and make a determination about whether it still qualifies, which is the language right. probably missing. Yeah. Uh, that, that sort of handcuffed them in that way. So we don't want to be handcuffed. Where exactly. It's, okay. It's not able to. All right. Bring so let me back to either side, to be honest. Right. Okay. So I'll email her back and try to get her to a meeting. Um, so that we can ask all these questions and I'll uh, forward any the, the questions that we do have to her. Um, is there anything else on this before we, no? Okay, great. So next up is our last discussion item and that's the agenda for the meetings going forward. Yes, yeah, so we will be meeting um, on the uh 20th and on may 4th and the 18th and i guess we've got a little bit of uh something coming up for each of those now okay um but i guess in terms of longer term things um i can speak to one marijuana and i think we left this off a while ago doug that um yeah, we, did. we were going to discuss with staff and um i did have a good meeting with the finance director um i brought it up with the town manager a couple times and um frankly we've all been uh, super super busy over the winter and um I yeah, think I know. it's probably about time to uh, circle back with that. So um, yeah, I do I want to just get a sense of where um, the administration um, is planning to go with, um, you know, the host community agreements and things like that and, and what they th where they think the uh, the license may fit into that. But I can try to, um, you know, catch up with uh, the finance director and and um, and Paul and see um, see what their thoughts are so we can start uh, start um, moving forward with that again. Yeah, just one quick question i know that there was some potential legislative action relative to those community agreements because you know it was unclear and there's been a lot of debate back and forth about what community can or cannot charge you know and to what extent they can you know sort of levy um payments from the the license well not licensees but the i guess licensees um the establishments have you heard any more from the legislative front about whether they've clarified the rules around host community agreements and and the persistence of them or something like them um yes i uh 
I can, um, I, I don't think I've heard, if I remember correctly, I think the state law did change a little bit, possibly in the face of uh, some encroaching uh, litigation. Um, and I think there was still some things to be determined um, going forward at about that time. That would have been you know, the last time we were really focusing on this. Right, um, right. I know. To my knowledge, I don't know if there's been any developments since then, but there may have been. So we can definitely right. look into that. Yeah, if you if you have, you know, even if you just find the old stuff you had, if you could forward that to me, because I think what I was envisioning doing, and I haven't had a moment to do this myself, so I can be, you know, I've been in plenty of meetings with both the town manager and the finance director on other topics, so I know they've been busy, because if I see them as regularly as I have seen them or talked to them on the phone, I know that they've been, uh, you know, pretty busy. So I, I appreciate this isn't first on their list. Um, but I, I think the thing I was thinking about was to um, <clears throat> is if we wanted to fold some of the aspects of the host community agreement into the license process, then we just need to sort of articulate what those pieces are. And I've got from from uh, from Jeff Kravitz, who was our business development person that really led the first you know sort of uh, approval process and host community agreements. He gave me sort of the template that's been used in existing ones. You know, if there are certain components of that that we can basically make part of the licensing process, um, you know, I would start by kind of trying to fold those things in and, and uh, you know, start to shape that language. I, I think the stuff we have in there now for the license around process procedure, that sort of thing's fine. This is really more augmentative additional stuff that would go in. I just kind of find the right section and the right uh, sort of verbiage to sort of articulate those those requirements that that are in host community agreements that now could be part of the license and license renewal. Yeah, absolutely. That's uh, that's pretty much the crux of um, of what I'm trying to trying to uh, get a sense of what they're thinking is um, is yeah where they see that line being drawn. So um, we'll definitely yeah. get some more clarity with that. As I will send an email to Sean uh, right after this meeting. Yeah, I can just tell my colleagues at 420 it won't happen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know that you need to put it on the agenda. It, you know, I mean, I might if if. If things go perfectly, I might have an opportunity to like look it over a little bit. So I might be able to sort of give you more context, but not any, there won't be any work product to look over. So probably more like May 4th or, or so before we get okay. there. Okay. So we won't worry about it next time. I think um, hopefully I'll try to get Mandy for next time for our discussion item. Is there anything else we were going to talk about? Well, we've also got our license at the, uh, the Spoke Live. Uh, oh, yeah. The license at the Spoke Live is coming up next time. Um, Can I ask, and then, uh, did you did you do any actual hearing on on last meeting? So I, I missed last meeting. No, yeah. we we opened it and continued it. Oh, okay, so there's not been any yeah. discussion of the of the license. No. Today. Okay. No. No, we had a uh, a we were not really able to make quorum last time, and uh, thankfully Dylan was able to stop by for twenty minutes, and um, we got through what was absolutely necessary, and. Uh, did not get through um, much else, so we didn't mm -hmm. even open that one. Really, or it's open to technically, but we didn't really start discussion of that one yet. Right. I was in the. Uh, if I remember correctly, I was in some negotiations. Couldn't really. Miss yeah. That. Sorry. No. <laughs> Fine. That happens. Yeah. I had so, a. Uh, uh, sorry, I just think I had a friend in town. All of a sudden, I'm like, well, I. Uh, we've got four other people. I'm sure they'll be able to handle. <laughs> Handled the meeting that night. Yeah. Not the case. <laughs> yeah. No, it went it went fine. We did it fast. It was fast. It was good. Um, okay. So we'll just so right now we've just got rental registry or the bylaws for next time and with Mandy, hopefully, and um the spoke hearings. And were there any other discussion things we were gonna work on this year? I can't remember. I don't know. I'll have to go back through my notes. Okay. Yeah, I can't um, think of anything off the top of my head either because yeah. I think um, yeah, lunch carts and marijuana and we oh, right. go through um, both lunch carts rest. is May 4th. Okay. Um, topics not anticipated 48 hours prior to the meeting. Any topics? No? Okay. I have nothing. All right, great. In that case, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you. Second. Is there a second? Thanks, Doug. Uh, I'll take a vote. Dylan? Aye. Doug? Aye. And I vote aye. That is three to zero with two absent. We're adjourned at 6 11 p.m. Right. Thanks, everybody. All right.
You all have a good night, Easter. Yeah. Celebrate yeah. that or Passover yeah. or whatever. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You too. Yeah. Good night. Happy well, Easter. Well. Bye. Bye. Bye, Steve. Yeah, bye. Thanks. Thank you, everybody.